As much as Rome is known for its monumental architecture, ancient ruins, and beautiful churches, it is their absolutely to die for food that'll keep you coming back to the eternal city. Rome is a city serving its own distinct style of Italian cuisine full of fantastic eateries, so choosing where to eat can be a bit intimidating for some. So today, we're going to show you our top 10 places to eat in Rome. We're by no means locals or tour guides, but we can assure you that our experiences in these 10 places were genuinely life-changing. We hope you find this guide useful, so let's get started. Any good travel day starts with coffee, of course, and not just any coffee, because espresso was invented in Italy, and Rome is so full of fantastic espresso bars to kickstart your morning. One legendary espresso bar is San Ustacchio Il Cafe, which is just a stone's throw away from the Pantheon. They've been slinging fine coffee and pastries since 1938, so you know it's a local institution. We got their Gran Cafe coffee and a generously filled pistachio croissant, which was a great way to start the morning. I know some people have their reservations about about Italian espresso, especially compared to third and fourth wave coffee shops, but I definitely won't be passing up on the opportunity to try coffee in the birthplace of espresso. Our second place is Pizzeria Bonchi that serves what will probably be your new favorite pizza. The founder, Gabriel Bonchi, is considered the Michelangelo of pizza, and once you taste their pizzas, you'll clearly see why. Roman pizza is sometimes referred to as pizza al taglio or pizza by the slice, and at Bonchi, they sell these heavenly slices by the gram. They have so many delicious flavors to choose from, and they constantly create new ones as well, but I remember that prawn and potato pizza with a drizzle of honey, which was definitely our favorite flavor. There was also coppa and stracciatella cheese, tomato, and mushroom. And they even had a double stack pizza sandwich with porchetta, some herbs, and chicory leaves. Also, if their pizza isn't enough for you, they even got some supli and carbonara arancini. All right, but to be honest though, have you had a better pizza since Bonchi? No, <laughs> nothing has come close since then. And honestly, I'm literally counting down the minutes until I can have that pizza. Next up is Mordi e Vai, a legendary panini shop in the Testaccio market. It's a local institution away from the touristy areas of Rome, serving up some incredible Roman-style sandwiches. They've got delectable fillings sandwiched between two pillowy breads, such as their best-selling slow-cooked beef sandwich, veal gorgonzola and mushroom, and even a veal carbonara panino. My personal favorite, however, was their sandwich stuffed with a tomatoey and luscious tripa alla romana, or Roman-style tripe. Honestly, tripe in general is just one of my favorite cuts of beef. Well, maybe not my sisters over here. Okay, before the haters come for me, I respect tripe. It's just not for me, okay? I respect it. <laughs> Anyway, you'll also find countless news articles around the shop and even photos with celebrities such as our, our Food Network heroes, Jada De Laurentiis and Bobby Flay, and even with the most wholesome man in Hollywood, Brendan Fraser. Personally, I think I knew this place was gonna be good from the get-go, just from the sheer amount of photos the owner has of his face like plastered along the walls and posters of the shop. That's pretty much a definition of standing by your product. Finally, we have our first pasta place on this list. This is the show-stopping Osteria de Fortunata. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Right next to Piazza Campo de Fiori. We actually saw this place on Simon and Martina's video on food in Rome, and we knew we had to go here when we saw that video. The pasta here is handmade, and we got flavors such as the spicy Chiavatelli Arabiata with these thick and chewy pasta noodles, an ultra-comforting gnocchi with a lamb and tomato sauce, and finally, some Roman icons, cacio e pepe and carbonara, which was my favorite from the trip. Just look at how luscious and luxurious they are. Also, uh, can we appreciate how cute their painted coffee cups are? Let's put some beef footage right now. All right, can carry on. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely need to come here as early as you can because lights can form really quick. Either way, Osteria de Fortunata is really worth the wait. 
Rome is a very ancient city, but this spot is serving an already beloved Italian street food invented only in 2008. I'm talking of course about Trapezino, a street food so good that they renamed the restaurant where it was invented after it. It's basically the final form of a pizza pocket filled to the brim with any filling your mind can conjure up. Part sandwich, part pizza, it's truly the, the best of both worlds. <laughs> Okay. Not the Hannah Montana reference. <laughs> cut, cut. <laughs> cut the cameras. I still remember biting into one of these bad boys. That ultra crispy on the outside, yet spongy on the inside pizza bread filled with a variety of heavenly flavors to match. Luckily, they've got a bunch of branches around Rome, so you're never too far from snagging the ultimate walking snack. Italian food is very firmly rooted in tradition and history, but it sure does pull out a few new tricks up its sleeve from time to time. From an iconic newcomer to a local institution, our next spot, Dar Filetaro, was an unexpected surprise. We actually had dinner planned somewhere else that didn't pull through, so we were scrambling to find a new place to have dinner, and luckily for us, we found a massive group of locals waiting outside this restaurant, and obviously we had to go investigate, and so happy we did. Inside, you'll find a busy spot with a rustic atmosphere. Other than a few sides and snacks, the menu is very simple and we went for the main event, the fried filet of cod. It has a light crispy batter with fish that is delicate and succulent. You can have it by itself or with a bit of white wine vinegar for that extra tang. It's so simple, but sometimes simple food is the best. We even had some sides to go with it, such as your classic Roman chicory salad, some mushrooms, and even these delicious golden fried zucchini fritters. This is a local institution that's been open since the 1950s, and we can clearly see why. Now speaking of local institutions, let's cross the river Tiber and into the Trastevere neighborhood, where you'll find Trattoria da Enzo. Legendary is an understatement when describing this place. This was by far our favorite meal in Rome, which kind of sucked because it was our first dinner on our first day, so it already set a very high bar. It's a cozy neighborhood spot where you're also going to have to get cozy lining up because the lines here can get really long. Once you're sat down, however, you'll soon realize that the wait will be well worth it. They serve classic Roman food that we ate with a touch of disbelief as to how good the food was. Our meal started with some of the most amazing complimentary bread, house white wine of course, and these delightful fried zucchini flowers filled with anchovies, followed by some classic Roman artichokes, then even some meatballs. But it was the passes that really sent us to Italian food heaven. I'm talking about this to die for oxtail stew rigatoni, this luscious cacio e pepe, and of course, ah, the best carbonara I've ever had in my life. We also ended the meal with some tiramisu and mascarpone custard, which honestly made me laugh and smile uncontrollably because it was just that good. What a memorable meal. Moving back across the river into the historic Jewish ghetto, we find Nonna Betta, a restaurant serving delicious Jewish Roman cuisine. As its name suggests, this area has suffered from a dark past where it served as a gated and impoverished area for Rome's Jewish communities. And around the restaurant, you'll find paintings and murals reminding you of this area's history. They are often limited to what was considered undesirable or cheap ingredients such as tripe, zucchini, artichokes, and codfish, but what resulted is a distinct cuisine all on its own and now became an iconic part of the city's rich food history. You'll find a few of these dishes highlighted in the food at Nona Betta, starting with their fried artichokes, which is a classic starter. We also got a delicious Jewish-style carbonara, which of course substitutes the non-kosher pork with beef. Same goes for their Grisha pasta, which also adds artichokes for a great veggie touch. Finally, my favorite dish here was the codfish nonna betta style. I'm a sucker for bacala or salt cod, and this creamy dish topped with pistachios made me love the fish even more. Nonna betta is definitely a great spot not only to experience great food, but also gain an insight on an important part of Rome's history. Moving on to desserts, but still staying within the historic Jewish quarter, we have Pasticceria Boccione, a Jewish quarter institution that's been open since 1815. What you need to get here is their famous ricotta pies, a dessert that's equal parts fascinating as it is delicious. Jews in the historic ghetto were prohibited from trading dairy products, but they did the, the big brain move of topping their creamy ricotta cheese filled pies with a thick slab of pastry dough, effectively hiding the cheese. 
Okay, but why can't they just like cut the pie and just check? <laughs> Wait, no, no, she's right, she's right. I guess these Renaissance Romans really didn't know what they were missing out on. Anyway, these pies are to die for. The ricotta filling manages to be both light and Moorish, and the pastry is just perfect. You can choose a pie filled with chocolate shards, or my personal favorite, which was filled with cherries, which contrasts the creamy ricotta with a delightfully light tanginess. It's not every day that you can literally eat a, a slice of history, so make sure you make the journey to Pasticceria Boccioni. Finally, we end our list with some gelato. You obviously can't come to Italy without trying some great artisanal gelato, and Fata Morgana is a fantastic place to have a quality cone or cup. Also, shout out to Lucas from Eater, who was one of the OGs of food YouTube, because that's how we found out about this place, so thank you, Lucas. They have a variety of both classic and unique flavors made with the highest quality natural ingredients that make for a very luscious and creamy gelato. We got classic flavors such as our favorite pistachio, stracciatella, hazelnut, and dark chocolate to other exciting flavors like matcha and even carrot cake. It's perfect for hot summers or even on a cold winter's day like us. I mean, yeah, our hands are freezing. Yeah, I have sensitive teeth, but it was very much well worth freezing over. So now that does it for our 10 favorite spots here in Rome. This list obviously is not an authoritative or definitive one, and there's so many places that we missed out on and we just couldn't feature here, so here are a few honorable mentions. Osteria della Sabura is a cozy trattoria near the Colosseum serving some rustic Roman dishes. This is a great spot if you're looking to recharge or get some food, especially if you want a quick rest in between visiting the Colosseum and the Roman Forum. Ristorante Carlo Menta is another great spot in the Trastevere neighborhood. It's a very popular joint where you will find delicious and decently portioned Roman classics at very affordable prices. Finally, Antico Forno Roscioli. The fact that this iconic spot got relegated to the honorable mentions is a testament to how much great food there is in Rome. Make no mistake, however, their Roman style pizza here is second to none. They even have a bakery and deli if you're looking for more than their incredible pizzas. Okay, at this point, I'm sure some of you are thinking, oh, nah, you missed out on this place, or oh, nah, that place is trash, this place does it better. But at the end of the day, that's the beauty of travel and food. Not only will people have wildly different opinions about their favorite spots to eat in Rome, but it also means that there will always be another exciting restaurant or unknown food for you to explore. And obviously, this list is just based on our own brief experience in Rome, so do let us know down in the comments below what are some of your favorite places to eat in Rome. Also, you can check out our full Italy playlist if you want a more in-depth look at all the places we featured on this list as well as the fantastic tourist activities we got up to. Anyway guys, we hope you enjoyed this video and found this list useful. We wish you happy, safe eating and travels across the Eternal City. We know you'll have a great time!